Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes, the next plane 11. For this flight I'm going from Juneau in Alaska to Prince Rupert in British Columbia and I am flying in the B-52H. This is a freeware B-52H by Gun1, G-H-U-N-1 on the xplane.org forum and um, it is good. I mean ver very good for a freeware plane to have a cockpit like this and uh, the exterior is good too although uh, just this one livery though you know it's uh, certainly serviceable and we'll have a little bit of flaps one thing I'll say during the test flight it was really hard to handle it is it is quite a beast and I'm not too sure the real thing was that hard to handle I, I honestly don't know but it felt really sluggish, so I'm gonna have to line up with the runway properly this time, maybe, hopefully. Uh, yeah, that would be helpful, otherwise um, it's not gonna turn very well. Yeah, otherwise. So, anyway, uh, so this is how it looks. It is always fascinating to have eight engine dials, eight sets of engine dials there. And, of course, eight throttles. That's special stuff. Uh, anyway, so I've been doing bombers so far. We did the B-47, the B-1B, so here's the B-52. And it's just a fairly short flight, but it should be interesting. Let's take it from outside and continue with the Apollo 13 audio that is currently in progress. Let me press play on that and hopefully it'll pick up soon. It always, it, the file is really huge. Uh, like the entire audio in this file is it's chopped up quite a lot but it's me 60 hours so and I've got a little marker where I need to pick up from so anyway that sounds okay it's a little bit loud and we're still in very much a noisy section in the audio I'll turn it down a little bit I think okay but throttle up Up, it is noisy calm, all right, and breaks off. We're fairly light. I didn't put too much of a load in. Hopefully, that'll help with the turning and everything. Oh, well, that's whoa! It tweaked uh, the wings a little bit there. Hmm. It went up uh, a little bit later than I thought it would. Okay, otherwise it's trimmed fine already. That's good. This is Apollo Control at 94 hours 41 minutes ground elapsed time. Position and, velocity and we've got a lot of clouds uh, around today. 178,274 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity 3,982 feet per second. Spacecraft weight still uh, hovering around 87,942 pounds. 94 hours, 42 minutes. Ground elapsed time and standing by. This is Apollo Control. Aquarius Houston. Back 
Oh, what's that sound? Oh dear. Oh, music. I think that's probably not distinct enough to cause any problems. There's some bad scenery up ahead. I think I might have to sort of give up on Alaska in the future uh, as far as photo scenery is concerned. It's way too inconsistent. And Alaska's huge, so it takes up a lot of space to get photo scenery for Alaska anyway. Fred, you said you want to try it now. No, we can look at this view anyway. No, it'll be fine. Okay, well, I mean, it's not that long a trip. I'll just flatten out here. Houston, uh, okay, go ahead. 
certain when the best time is to implement this procedure. And what we want to do at this time is read it up to you so you'll have it and uh, understand it. And uh, we will, we'll be able to do it uh, quickly when, uh, when the time comes. And I don't have it for you quite yet. Did he say blow? <laughs> Apparently a tank is going to blow. We just thought you ought to be informed. Well, I sure hope so. I guess it's not a big thing that is going to blow. Options are set too high. Um, let me get that thing. That's weird. I mean, why? This is a. We're in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. It sure is having trouble. Maybe when there's messed up scenery, it's really messed up scenery. Two, main B, both close. Over. 
step, panel 250, CB, bat B. Panel 250. There aren't really that many panels, it was just for simplicity to number it that, but... It can sure send chills down your spine to think of that many panels. Audible. Oh, there we go. I'm, le I'm letting it descend. I think that's probably for the best. The entire flight's only 280 nautical miles, so we're nearly halfway through. Just let it gently wander down. Well, those are nice mountains over there. Those would probably be in British Columbia. 
we're flying over Alaska, but it's that thin part of Alaska that's right next to British Columbia. I don't see a particular name for those mountains. Maybe Mount Edziza? Ed, Edziza? Mount Edziza Provincial Park? Maybe. Actually, no, we would have passed that. Relaxed. Of course, they're gonna make them take photos of the service module. Had nothing to do with being yeah. relaxed about it. He's got all that film up there, and he doesn't want to waste it. Oh, I, I thought maybe he'd want me to do a plus EVA to go take pictures or something. Okay, okay. <laughs> do a stand-up EVA to get some good pictures. No, I don't think they're gonna let him do that. Nor I don't. I don't think it'd be possible anymore. Fido's the flight dynamics officer, so by avoiding additional dumps, they're not going to change their trajectory. So he doesn't have to recalculate everything. Sort of better now. Uh, it, uh, it might work if we had to do it, uh, Fred. Uh, right now, uh, we're looking at a, uh, at a comfortable uh, excess of uh, water for the sublimator. Uh, we were talking among ourselves this morning about uh, having you try out the PLIS to uh, ascent tank uh, water transfer uh, situation, and we decided not to do it not to recommend it because uh, we figure it'd take us 30 hours to empty one of the ascent tanks, which you have to do in order to get plus water into it. <coughs> and uh, we'd rather use the descent water and uh, we don't think we've got any sweat. So thankful for the PAO segments because the uh, air to ground is so noisy. Present thinking on the mid 
course correction, which would bring Apollo 13 back into the Earth intersecting corridor, would be a limb uh, maneuver, propulsion maneuver, of about seven feet per second at 104 hours ground elapsed time, and would return the spacecraft to uh, the entry corridor, uh, shooting for a flight path angle of about uh, minus six and a half degrees. On all uh, lunar missions to date, uh, with few exceptions, uh, during the trans-Earth coast phase, uh, some sort of mid-course correction has been necessary to get back onto the corridor, depending on the accuracy of the trans-Earth injection. This particular mission is certainly no different. The spacecraft communicator, uh, Joe Kerwin, is away from the console at the moment uh, after having read up some additional checklist changes. Continuing to monitor the air ground, uh, Kerwin returning to the console. If the uh, mid-course correction in this trans-Earth uh, phase is delayed uh, beyond 104 hours to the second one that's uh, in contention uh, the second time, 118 hours, it would be somewhat greater magnitude, more in the neighborhood of 40 feet per second. Uh, with the 7 foot per second mid-course correction at 104 hours, the vacuum perigee would be uh, around 20 nautical miles. Flight path angle of minus 6.51 degrees. At 95 hours, 32 minutes, ground elapsed time, and standing by, this is Apollo Control. I'm not exactly what what's they're planning on have bursting, but I'll have to look into that. I suppose it's not particularly serious.
Remind me that. What window are you looking at it uh, out of, Fred? Out the uh, left docking window. The docking window, Roger that. Sorry, I've been uh, checking on the map, so sometimes when I click out of the game, it uh, gets a little bit choppy on the recording. I noticed that it said that the encoding was iffy right there. One problem is that I have to... Well, I don't know if I have to anymore with the remainder of the videos, but... At a certain point, I had to upscale to 1440p in order to ensure that YouTube wouldn't downscale it to make it muddy. And it did that for some videos. It turned out that upscaling to 1440p helped that problem, but it also takes a lot of processing. Bend the trajectory back to uh, the entry corridor with a vacuum perigee of around 20 nautical miles. The burn would be at 105.30, ground elapsed time. Descent propulsion system burn, 7.6 feet per second, 14.8 seconds duration. This burn uh, would be is uh, being timed to coincide with the estimated time that the burst disk in the supercritical helium in the lunar module uh, will give way so that the effects on the trajectory would be lessened. Oh, so and the helium the is what pressurizes the, the propellant uh, tanks. Of course, helium is in inert, so at the same time. it shouldn't cause problems. The, I don't know what the uh, purpose of the burst the disk is. But it sounds like it's meant to burst. No, so. It is non-propulsive. That is, there's a T in the line, and it should cancel out any delta V added by the venting. However, there's somewhat uh, a certain amount of uncertainty in this regard. At any rate, uh, having the burn and the burst disk event near the same time frame, it gets both of these events out of the way and gives a good long uh, bit of tracking to pin down what the new trajectory will be. We're now showing uh, 0.1 millimeters of mercury partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the lunar module. So apparently the shade tree engineering using the command module lithium hydroxide canisters and the plastic bag and the suit hoses uh, is working out all right. And at 96, uh, 96 hours, 3 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control at 96 hours, 15 minutes. The clouds sure time. don't help in terms of... Uh Encoding. Sacks with sandwiches being brought into the room by a young lady. Getting back to uh, mid course correction in the trans Earth coast phase here in Apollo 13, uh, the current thinking is to do a descent propulsion system maneuver at about 105 hours 30 minutes, ground elapsed time, 7.6 feet per second, the burn time of 14.8 seconds. Apollo 8, uh, back in December of 1968, did a similar burn at about a similar time. Uh, however, it was a command module or service module RCS burn of 4.8 seconds, or 4.8 feet per second at uh, 103.58. The uh, burn is intentionally timed to the estimated time frame in which the lunar module supercritical helium burst disk is supposed to let go. It's not anticipated that this burst disk, uh, the venting of the supercritical helium, will cause any uh, perturbations to the trajectory and that the vent uh, outlet 
has a T on it and thereby cancels out any propulsion. It's uh, called a non-propulsive vent. Having the burn and the burst disc take place in the same time frame will allow the uh, tracking after these events to uh, Is this a, a repeat tape or is he just repeating what he said before? Entry corridor and calculations toward entry. Oh well. There's uh, quite a bit of propulsion available out of the Well, we're lower down now uh, and we see all the mountains still available uh, with a vehicle that still over the Alaska. Prince Rupert is small, uh, pretty close RCS to the border between Alaska and, Alaska and British Columbia. 28 feet per second available out of that system. Still a great deal of propulsion available in uh, the descent propulsion system and one is yet untapped system. That's the ascent propulsion engine in the upper stage of the lunar module, which uh, likely won't even be used at all. Rather quiet now on the air ground circuit. Uh, taking a lunch break here in mission control. Uh, sandwich sandwiches were brought in, as mentioned earlier. And uh, most of the people are taking this opportunity to uh, have a mid-afternoon snack. At 96 hours, 18 minutes, and standing by, this is Apollo Control. One minor thing is the lights on the wingtips seem to be not connected to the wings at all. That is one detail. Once I see it, I can't unsee it. I think you wanted the GET, Jack, and the present GET is 96 hours, 21 minutes over. Earth's sphere influence, yay. Sure takes a while. Procedures. Aquarius Houston, over. Go ahead, Joe. Okay, we are taking our final look at the uh, mid course uh, procedures, and uh, we have a question as to the present position of uh, one of the switches. Uh, the switch is the AGS status switch on panel six. We'd just like to know where it's at.
Let's see, map. Ah, there we go, Prince Rupert. I hope that's a long enough runway. This is Apollo Control at 96 hours 53 minutes ground elapsed time. We can pretty much fly straight in. Spacecraft communicator Vance Brand has relieved uh, Joe Kerwin at that post. The spacecraft communicator is uh, on a different shift schedule than the rest of the 60 miles. To go back again once over lightly with the uh, mid-course correction upcoming. Repeat the current thinking is to do a mid-course correction burn at 105 hours 30 minutes around elapsed time. <coughs> Descent propulsion system of the lunar module would do the burn. The velocity change would be 7.6 feet per second. This burn would place the Apollo 13 spacecraft back on the uh, entry corridor or entry in the South Central Pacific. Oh, looks like Another the clouds are clearing is, uh, up. Timing Maybe. the maneuver at 105.30 instead of the earlier discussed 104 hours is that uh, it's expected that uh, supercritical helium burst disk in the lunar module descent stage is likely to let go at about, uh, about this time frame, 105.30. And by doing the maneuver <coughs> and the... Uh, and having the burst disk rupture at this time would put both of these events I guess uh, this is together, so the main thing he's uh, burst disk explaining these days. <laughs> it's the third time I've heard him explain it. As far as tracking is concerned. So this would get them both behind and uh, an accurate tracking state vector of the spacecraft could be measured. It's expected that uh, the new thinking on the mid-course correction will be passed up to the crew before too long. Okay, hold on. Not below 10,000 feet, please. This area is looking good. To our right is Duke Island. Non -free return trajectory to a free return trajectory. Not too sure what to call the next maneuver the stuff to our left, except it's still Alaska. Back from one the last little bit of Alaska. To another with a change in the landing point and landing time. No, oh, I guess we'll just continue descent. We're continuing to stand by. Velocity now showing 4,068 feet per second as Apollo 13 continues to accelerate now that it's back into the Earth's sphere of influence. Some 172,937 miles out from Earth. At 96 hours 57 minutes ground elapsed time and standing by, this is Apollo Control. Uh, 
this, Houston. Go ahead. Okay, Van. Uh, I just heard a little pump. It sounded like down in the decent stage, and I uh, uh, saw a new uh, shower of snowflakes uh, come up that looked like they were a minute from down that way. The bar is decided, so I wonder uh, what the foot pressure looked like now. Okay, uh, understand you. Saw a thump in the descent stage and a few snowflakes. Uh, we'll take a look down here, see if we can see anything. She tank is the supercritical helium, so I guess that's not what went. <laughs> about 35 nautical miles away. We are over British Columbia now, so Canada, and I was worried about the sudden onset of clouds, figures, oh well, maybe you have still got some luck, oh, let's just keep descending so I know what I'm dealing with here. Gingerbread cubes? This is in the food bank? <laughs> yeah. 
he sounds confused as well. Tool B. Was it a fork? Fred John says you could use the dikes on it to uh, get them apart. Yeah, that probably wouldn't have crumbled up as badly. Yeah, well, we'll try and fly straight in here. I think I'll go into the cockpit now. At least it's got this little screen here. That's a heck of a turn on that stick. A little bit distracting. I think everybody's feeling better down here too. Oh, I see lights there. Aquarius, Houston. Go ahead. Friend, Trying to level out and slow down uh, so we have Good speed for flaps. If you'd like, uh, Should be able to do flaps one notch. On Landing gear. Okay. Oh. Okay, then. I think it's things where it's too slow. I'm gonna have to be generous with the speed, I think. Mm, okay. Okay, Fred, we're receiving your metadata. It uh, was a little slow in coming in. Okay. Halfway on the flaps now. And, uh, uh, man, this is, uh, great. Go ahead, Fred. Okay, uh, Jim's, uh, coming back on the line, and, uh, uh, I'll be unhooking on the biomed, and you want me to go back to, uh, uh, FCA down voice back up. Stand by. Yeah, but it's interesting to handle, all right. Okay, jump that damn is uh, biomed uh, victim uh, right now. Uh, so, uh, and let's get the cover plug with the right down voice back up. Uh, A little bit too much lift with the flaps trimming down. That's the last sync. Okay, the little screen helps here. Well, I'm thinking about the last 10 hours we lost our suit compression. Because we don't want to uh, power. The sink is serious. Uh, a little bit rough. But okay, we're here. Could be worse. <laughs> All right.
Uh, I don't know where to taxi, actually. I didn't realize it was this small. Hmm. I get the feeling that this is not appropriate scenery for this particular airport, to be honest. I'll uh, just park off to the side here. Maybe it was morning for you. Oh, so lost track. There's a tractor yeah, there. Okay, so here we are at Prince Rupert Airport. Uh, and I'm going to pause. Just said, uh, he wondered how many hours. Pause the audio there. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.